Tonight on the show, I'm joined by Matt Damon here. His new film is The Martian, and I've persuaded him to wear the actual spacesuit for the film. It's a bit of a coup, really, so thanks a lot, Matt. You are an ace kid. You're all right. In that, that... <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to wear the suit. Fair enough. Yes. Okay. It's ridiculous. Let's start the show! show here we are back again lovely to be back of course so much has happened over the summer you know lots to talk about we could take our pick uh, the refugees labor leadership Volkswagen diesel scandal or yeah <laughs> uh, let, let, let's go with this let's go with this because you didn't see that story and you're like you, you what now yeah uh, in a new book it's claimed that as a student <laughs> who wouldn't uh, David Cameron had relations with a pig of the dead variety. It was dead, yeah. Uh, you think, what on earth would tempt someone to do that? You know. Uh, <laughs> ooh, look at those come to sty eyes. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> <laughs> if it did happen, if it did happen, do you think David ever thinks about the moment he did it? the apple back in. <laughs> and I, I do wonder what happened to the pig, ladies and gentlemen. You know, probably ended up in someone's bacon sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't forgotten you, Ed. No, we haven't. Hey, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Joining us later performing the summer hit, Can't Feel My Face, musical guest, The Weeknd, ladies and gentlemen. Comics, who's also a musician, actor, and presenter, and about to hit the road with his latest live show, Limbo Land. It is Mr. Bill Bailey. Oh. Hello, sir. Very well. Very welcome to the show. Nice to you. This lady blew us away with her performances in Zero Dark Thirty, The Help, and Interstellar. Now she's saving Matt Damon in the new Ridley Scott sci-fi, The Martian. It is. Jessica Chastain! Oh! 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 Hello, darling. Lovely to see you. Come in. And Goodwill Hunting, Private Ryan, Jason Bourne. He's all these people and more. A very warm welcome back to the Oscar winning actor, writer, and producer that is Matt Damon! Jessica, uh, there we go. cheers! <laughs> you guys, you've just come from the the Martian premiere, your new movie. Yeah. Premiere, sorry. Premier. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the premiere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How was it? Was it good? Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, was it was a big turnout. It was really. It was. Uh, it was in Leicester Square, and it was packed. I yeah. used to. I used to walk across Leicester Square when I did a play here in 2002. And I lived on the corner of Dean and Shaftesbury, and the theater was the Garrick, which is right on the other side of Leicester Square. So it's always weird for me to go there and there's like thousands of people screaming because I used to, that was my walk to work every day and obviously <laughs> nobody was there. No. <laughs> Not a lot of people there. Because Jessica, I know you are a fan of the British television. Oh my goodness, someone told you. Yes, I was here this spring <laughs> shooting a movie, um, The Huntsman, and I stumbled across a show called Embarrassing Bodies. Have you heard of this? I don't know this show. And yeah. the episode I saw is all about penises. <laughs> and there were close-ups of penises that had problems. For that had problems? <laughs> I was absolutely shocked. I couldn't <laughs> believe these people actually decided to go on the show yeah. and showcase their embarrassing penises. Can I show you something I'm really embarrassed about? <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of weird, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that went viral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
wondering what some of the... Oh, never mind. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> have you watched the show, Bill? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it? What, what, yeah. People think, I'm so... I'm mortified by this. I'd better yeah. go and uh, reveal myself on television. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that way, somehow, it's, you know expunge this embarrassment. But it is, it's extraordinary. It's a very British thing, I think, it is. We're, we have, we're very embarrassed about our bodies, so we, but we'd like to tell people about it. <laughs> I mean, there were things I couldn't even have imagined. Really? Yes. Or well, like uh, tentacles or tails, I think. Right? Just like things that didn't even look like part of the human body. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was you're, you're, body. you're so sheltered. <laughs> Now, I would say, Bill Bailey, yes. you know, it, apart from being famous, you have a very recognisable face. Yes. Like, the two of you, if you ever see Bill Bailey again, you'll go, oh, you were that oh, guy. That's we that's that no, no, guy. no, no, yeah. I, I already saw him on Embarrassing Bodies. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't his face. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> You saw that episode. Uh, I think it's going to be turned into a musical. That'd be fun. <laughs> but when you go, when you go on tour, <laughs> don't, don't. No. when you when you go on tour, like you're taking you neutral Limberland. Yeah. Do do you get people coming up? All that kind of tell us a joke. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, you do get that sometimes. I mean, it, and and also sometimes it's just uh, it's just mortifyingly you know embarrassing you know, because sometimes you really don't feel like telling a joke or being oh, funny. Yeah. You know, and I was. I was on a plane coming back from America, and um, I, uh, I, was, I had to get the last seat on the plane. And I got a seat in, uh, in coach, or well, economy, as we call it. And, uh, and normally, I wouldn't travel economy. And not because I'm some la di da diva, you know, I really don't need business. It's just that uh, <laughs> if you, I was to travel in economy, people would be going, Oh, look who's here! <laughs> Darren, look who I'm sitting next to! <laughs> Can you saw me menu? You know, so... so <laughs> Anyway, so I'm sitting there, kicking my head down, and then the stewardess comes and says, my boss is a big fan of yours. If you, said, if you make her laugh, she'll upgrade you to business class. Oh. And I was like, and I said to her, really, I have absolutely no intention of trying, even attempting to make you laugh. And she laughed her head off. <laughs> and, uh, and then it was like, come on, then. <laughs> I had to do the walk of shame up the business class. I was thinking, if I keep doing this, I'll get the first class and then I'll be flying the plane. Okay, yeah. But now, Matt Damon, I, I've heard you say in interviews that in fact you do walk around kind of unbothered, that people don't recognise you that much, which seems incredible. Yeah, no, I, I you know, uh, living in New York, you know, I, I'm in L.A. now, but for years in New York, <clears throat> I just put on a baseball hat and walk around and I'm kind of... I'm not, you know, like Ben Affleck, you know, who I grew up with is 6'3 or 6'4. You know, he, he just kind of sticks out just no matter what. And, yeah. and I'm, you know, 5'10. Nobody looks twice at me. Is that uh, an ordinary height? <laughs> That's just, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, uh, but, uh, you know, very, people, and, 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 and if people do recognize me, oftentimes I'm with my kids and they're just really cool about it. I mean, I had one experience here actually. Uh, I was in Greens Park. We were making The Bourne Ultimatum, so this would have been 2006. Uh, yeah, and my daughter was um, was young. She uh, she was she was just a toddler, and we and we had her out in in the park, and it was just uh, Lucy, my wife, and my daughter, and and me, and uh, it was kind of a, a rainy day, as you have here mm. sometimes. <laughs> uh, we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, and it was just us in the park, and we were playing um, with our baby. And this young Spanish couple came kind of strolling down hand in hand, and they kind of looked over and saw me and kind of went, kind of had an exchange, and then pulled out a camera and came over. And I kind of say to my, well, here we go, you know. And I <laughs> kind of come over, and uh, the guy says to me, uh, please, a uh, uh, picture, picture. And I said, no problem. And I went over to his wife, and I put my arm around him. <laughs> and he looked at me. <clears throat> Kind of in the international way that a man looks at another man when he's got his arm around his wife. And yeah. I realized you right away that he wanted me to take a picture of him. <laughs> they were looking for a photographer. They didn't, they didn't have any idea who I was. Keep, keep you humble. Keep yeah, you humble. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was great. My wife was there to witness the whole thing. So that was the first thing I said. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> So we still joke about that one. And now, obviously, everyone's very excited that Matt Damon is here, but in certain parts of the audience, and the audience at home, there might be some disappointment. Because people were perhaps hoping that they would be seeing Matt Damon 
and his ponytail. Uh, the ponytail <laughs> it, it caused quite the sensation this summer, uh, the ponytail, Matt yeah. Damon and his ponytail. Uh, when did it go? Well, I had it, you know, I did a movie in China, and, and, and so I was there for about five months with that, uh, with that thing, and then we did a press conference at the very end. <laughs> that thing. That thing. <laughs> no, it was, I, I, you know, it was, was hair it real? It, it was hair extensions. Oh, it wasn't real? Oh, no, my. it took, there were 700 hair extensions. It was a full day to put them in. They flew somebody, a wonderful woman from here, all the way to Beijing to do, to do it, and we did it like on a Sunday. It took us the entire day. So, wow. and then I had to manage that hair. I never knew. I have a whole new appreciation for my wife and daughter. <laughs> it's very hard to do. Because Matt uh, Damon's ponytail, it ended up with its own Twitter account. Uh, do, do you know that? I didn't know that. Of yeah, it, 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 it had its own Twitter account. But also, people, you know, people really appreciated that ponytail on Twitter. I don't know if you really? saw any of these tweets. <laughs> no, we I found didn't. some of the tweets that people... Uh, to, so, mmm, Matt Damon with a man bun. <laughs> Hashtag lady boner. <laughs> They get worse. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you think you have a basic understanding of the world, then you see Matt Damon's ponytail and nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one, this one's quite extreme. Matt Damon has a ponytail, and if everyone puts in a top knot, I think my ovaries might explode. <laughs> so never oh, put it in a top knot. Yeah, yeah. I won't do that. And who knows what this last one means? Matt Damon, I will use your ponytail to steer while you dine upon my lady sandwich. Wow. wow. She's really thought it through. She is. A lady sandwich. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's yeah, a charming that, thing. That's a... I just like the use of the word steer. <laughs> steer. <laughs> Left of it, Get right of it. That's it. Then back you got it. was <laughs> trained sheep dogs to steer. <laughs> <laughs> holding steady, holding steady. <laughs> docking, docking. <laughs> you brought it back to science fiction. I well done. It, it <laughs> you know. hey, because, because science fiction, we must talk about uh, Matt and Jessica's new film, The Martian. Now, it's a huge, big sci fi epic from Ridley Scott. It opens next Wednesday, the 30th of September. And you are The Martian. <laughs> yes. You are. I am, I am. I'm, I'm, I play a guy who's. Uh, we're, we're all part of a team of astronauts that are um, doing some research on Mars. It takes place in the very near future. And, uh, and I get left behind by my team. They take off in this kind of emergency situation. They think I'm dead. And so the movie is about this guy trying to survive by himself um, while help is trying to frantically get back to him. But it's, it can't get back there quickly because it's Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Because this film, I'm sure, will do well everywhere. But this film will do especially well, I feel, in Ireland. Because it is... Uh, it, it is... No, it, honestly, you'll love it. It's like a, It is one of the few cinematic celebrations of the potato. It is. <laughs> Yeah. No, sir, I was like, I was like, oh, look, they look very good, those potatoes. That's, that's what saves his life. I mean, he's got to figure out, you know, air, food, and water. And uh, he's got the air and the water sussed, but he's got to figure out food eventually. And, and he realizes that he can grow potatoes. He figures out a way to grow potatoes. So. And all the cooking options. And all the cooking. <laughs> we eat potatoes every way there is to eat a potato. Yeah. I think, no, it was yeah. delicious. Yeah. I was, I was, that was really good. And uh, now, Jessica, you play uh, the commander yes. of the original... Uh, uh, I, basically, I left him behind. I'm the one who leaves <laughs> Matt Damon on Mars. Yeah, doing the head count. On the head. <laughs> yeah, she's the, she's the commander of the first manned mission, and she uh, thinks he's dead, but he's not. So then she has to figure out how, if she can get back to save him in time. And that, well, well, the odd coincidence, of course, is you were both in Interstellar. Yeah. Uh, but also, someone left you behind there as well. <laughs> I, know. I know, and, you know, I... I did that cameo in Interstellar because um, I was desperate to work with Chris Nolan, and um, and then I took a year and a half off after that. I didn't work, and then Ridley came with this project, and and that was the first thing I said to him. I said, you know, I just I haven't worked in a long time. <laughs> the last thing I did, I played a guy who was stranded by himself on a planet. <laughs> Might not be the smartest thing to follow that up playing a guy <laughs> stranded by himself on a planet, <laughs> but um, but the movies are so different and the characters are so different that I that I and I couldn't resist. I mean, it was Ridley Scott. So. Well, so we've got a clip. We've managed to find a scene where you're in it together, because you you're not in it very much together. No, no. we had like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> which, was a, which was more than Interstellar. Yeah, we didn't Interstellar, have anything. Yeah, zero screen time we together. We think our third movie that we're both in together will actually have a lot of scenes together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
this is where the whole team are together up on Mars and they're deciding whether to stay or whether to go. 1,200 kilometers in diameter bearing 24.41 degrees. That's tracking right towards us. Based on current escalation, estimate a force of 8,600 newtons. What's the abort force? 7,500. Anything more than that and the math could tip. Begin abort procedure. Let's wait it out. Prep emergency departure. We're scrubbed, that's an order. Martinez, how long before takeoff? 12 minutes. Visibility is almost zero. Anyone gets lost, hone in my suit's telemetry. You ready? Ready! Commander, are you okay? I'm okay! Hey! We might be able to keep the map from tipping! Watch out! Here's the thing, because Bill, Bill Bailey, you are, you genuinely like science fiction and science and all this stuff. Yes, I do. So this Martian <laughs> film... <laughs> don't you do! I do, because I do. I'm just agreeing with you. Yeah. Well, they thought you were lying. But well, no, it's true. Yeah. So this, this film will be right up your strasse. I'd love it. It's fantastic. Now, we must say a big hurrah, because, uh, Matt Damon, you're back at the helm of the Bourne franchise. Jason Bourne is back. And uh, is that what you're filming at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, we're shooting it right now. We're, we're shooting it... Uh, uh, I was being chased just last night. Um, <laughs> but I got away. Phew. <laughs> but the one image they've released so far of the new uh, Bourne film... Has it got a name, by the way? The new oh, my I don't think it's got a name yet. But... <laughs> I know. <laughs> Pop a man bun on that. And the whole... <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to have the clean-up in aisle seven. Uh... <laughs> Because <laughs> <laughs> how long is it since you did The Last Born? Is it six, seven years? Yeah, more than that. Uh, it came out in 07, um, but we shot it in 06, so yeah, it's been nine years. Um, wow. And in movie time, it's even more because the, the third one and the second one are supposed to dovetail, like the third acts take place at the same time. So yeah. technically, James Bourne has or J James Bourne. <laughs> Jason Bourne hasn't been seen since <laughs> 2004. <laughs> And Jason Bond is fine, too. <laughs> is that a box spoiler? Yeah. Because <laughs> is it... I mean, because getting into that shape now, is that... Is it more challenging, or is oh. it the same? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be 45 in a couple weeks. It's... Brutal. No! Yeah, yeah. Good that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's much, much harder. I mean, the, the first Bourne movie I did... 15 years ago, so I think I turned 30 on the first one, and I'm turning 45 on this one. So yeah, it's a it's a whole different thing. Wow. Uh, and, I, and do you find the the choreograph fighting and stuff? Do you find that easy? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, they always put me with really good fighters, and that's the key because it's more like dancing when you're when you're doing that because mm. it's not you know a real fight. People are trying to hit each other, and in these fights, you're trying to just miss each other. So you have to be completely in sync and. And uh, moving exactly the right way, or, or the whole, if, if one of you messes up, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So it's much more like a dance. So I'm always going to be the weakest dancing partner of the two, right? Because <laughs> yeah. these guys are all professional fighters. So they, they really, like a great dancer, they can elevate the pers their partner, you know, so. I love the fighting in, in, in Bourne. Because Jason Bourne, the, the, he's a brilliant improviser with weapons. So if somebody's coming at him with a machine gun, and he'll get a ballpoint pen... Yeah. Wrap it round, yeah. magazine, <laughs> phone directory, <laughs> hole punch. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Stapler. <laughs> oh, God! It's practically, yeah, stationary. Stationary fire. Some boy from the desk. Some boy from the desk. He's got a bendy ruler! <laughs> It would be a great way to stage a scene in, in a stationary story. Yeah. Aisle to aisle to aisle. Poking another yeah. blue tack in your eye. Ah! Oh. A ring binder. Oh, yeah. a ring binder. Oh, 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 no. oh no. Oh, no. On the nipple. Oh, no. 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 Oh,
Because, Jessica Chastain, now, we don't think of you in terms of action films, but in The Debt, where you played the young Helen Mirren, yes. what was the martial art you had to get that really good at? That was Krav Maga. What is it, Krav? Maga. Where's that from? It's, it's the Israeli Defense Army way of fighting. It's super intense. It's basically how you kill your opponent as quickly as, as quickly possible. As you can, yeah. Busy, busy, busy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not people to kill. Uh. Yeah. I had like four months training with someone from the Israeli Defense Army. Wow. So uh, did you get properly good at it? Yeah, I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I like, had a lot of fun. Can you demonstrate? Could you, like, if I, could you break a board? Can you... <laughs> <laughs> like, karate kid a board? <laughs> yeah. Can you do, can you, have you got moves to show Yeah, us? like, if someone came at me with a knife or something or had a gun, I could disarm them. Okay, so if I've attacked you with a bit of fruit... <laughs> you might get hurt. No, seriously, would you hurt me? <laughs> I'll try not no, to. No, are you a bit bad at it? Like, are, are you a no, bit... No, no, I... Are you a bit trigger happy when you break my arm by I won't accident? Break your, I won't break your arm, and I'll go very slow. Oh, no, ser Now... <laughs> I thought this was an amusing idea, but maybe... Like, no, seriously, will I, I be okay? I won't hurt you, I promise. Okay, do you really promise? I swear. Pinky Can swear. Can you trust her? <laughs> you should totally. <laughs> okay. I wear high heels, she, okay, for okay, 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 okay. Right, so, where... So, am I just coming at you with a... Me, would you really hold a knife like that? No, I'd be like, oh, sorry. Oh, oh wait, <laughs> no, I'm no. holding it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'll disarm you the minute you start holding it properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, like that? Well, no, okay, fine, sure. But no, how should I hold it? This is fine, so basically... No, no, wait a minute, no. Come at me. Come at me, perfect, perfect. Is that all right? No. Yeah. How, how do you hold... Like, if you're gonna stab me... You I'd be kinda... like... There that... you go, perfect. Let's do it again. Okay, Ready? so I'm, I'm coming at you. Yeah, then I go like this. I'm doing it in slow motion so I don't hurt you. <laughs> Oh, oh, ah, 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 oh, oh. That's, that's, oh, ah, 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 That's amazing. You okay? I'm wearing my heels. I'm very all right. I, I did it really ah. slow because I didn't want to hurt you. You didn't even bruise the banana. <laughs> it's beautifully done. That's impressive. Wow. Thanks. Does that make you feel kind of safe? Not really. No? Because I have had a conversation with someone. Is that really how you're going to attack me? <laughs> you don't hold the knife like that. Yeah. On the street. Is yeah. that how you mug people? <laughs> I remember training for the first Bourne movie, and I did, like, yeah, six months with these guys, and, and, and at the end, the guy looked at me completely seriously, and he goes, now you remember what to do if somebody comes at you with a knife. Because <laughs> he taught me 56 different disarms, and I said, okay, yeah, uh, there's, uh, and he goes, run. <laughs> <laughs> you run. Run. Yeah. I said, okay, okay, okay. You, uh, you, you run. 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 <laughs> It's interesting that you asked me to disarm you and not Matt. <laughs> no, I loved it. I, that was great. First of all, you did it in high heels, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. That was very impressive. Yeah. That was very impressive. Right, you. Have, you been, have you learned any special skills? Yes, I uh, learned a special skill of driving a horse and cart. Uh, <laughs> which is not brilliant in a mugging situation. <laughs> I saddle up and score some crap, and then I'll be on my way. No. It, uh, I, went, I was for, for Danny McPhee. I tried, they, they sent me away on a course to learn how to... How to I was playing a bewildered farmer, which is my, my default role in film. <laughs> and uh, when I looked through a film script, a bewildered man of a rusty hair, that's me, and... Uh, <laughs> oh, that was the worst day of my life. Mocking you. Uh, now, Bill Bailey, you're back on the road, yeah. presumably not in a horse cart, uh, the new tour called Limbo Land. Uh, yes. It kicks off in Ireland on Monday. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. I'll be there. Tell them about the potato film. <laughs> Tell them about the potato film that's coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will, I will, yeah. <laughs> Potatoes on Mars. No, really. <laughs> Go see it. Yeah. But you come back here to the UK, Plymouth on the 9th of October, then around the country, yeah. and then in December, five weeks at London's Vaudeville yeah, Theatre. in the West End. A little residency. That's posh. That'd be nice. It? Very posh. Yeah. Lovely. That's oh, lovely. I love yeah. it. And is Limbo Land a place? Uh, yeah, well, it's a kind of a word I made up uh, to it, because I was trying to... The word I wanted, was, I wanted to get two things in. Limbo, which is like a state of, you know, my own bewilderment at the world. And then the other word I wanted to try and get in was tombola. And tombola, you know, it's like a, like a lucky dip. It's like a box you spin around and you pick out and, oh, and, oh I'm going to be an astronaut. Oh, I'm going to be a, a comedian. You know, it's like the, the, the random nature of life. So I wanted to put the two together. I wanted to have limbo and tombola. So I wanted to call the show Limbola. Right? <laughs> but then somebody told me it sounds a bit like Ebola. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, maybe not. You know, it's not, it's not a great title for a comedy show. We're going to see Ebola tonight. Oh, really? No. <laughs> Eight o'clock it starts. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that Bill Bailey's changed. He's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, is the story in the show, or is the story happening in life, the story involving the goose? Yes. No, that's true. That's what happened. That's a, that's a real story. I mean, that was, again, that was like, you know... And again, it's a, I, mean, I may talk about... I mean, I do a lot of work with conservation and animals and wildlife conservation, and sometimes, you know, you, you, you try to do a good thing and, and it backfires, you know. It's like a, it was like a, you know, a, the best intentions, and they backfire on you. I was, we were coming back from a dinner, my wife and I, in, in London, and it was very late at night, it was like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, we were driving down the Mall in front of Buckingham Palace, and we saw an animal in distress, clearly in distress, at the side of the road. And it was a goose. And there's quite a lot of animals around, a lot of geese around there. And it was sort of flapping on the, on the road, like clearly a bit in, in distress. So we stopped um, and got out of the car. And, and, and so you know, and my wife was saying, Let's, we must save it. We, you know, we've got to try and save it. And I was a little bit, I was like, you know, half two, come on. I mean, there's no one around. <laughs> you know, maybe just, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You know, like, really? I'm not thought, in danger. I can't do that, because it was Valentine's night, and I was thinking, you know, what did you do Valentine's night? Oh, I reversed over a goose. Uh, <laughs> it was a magical night. So, <laughs> so my wife, we, we had a blanket in the back of the car, and I wrapped the goose in the blanket, and we put the goose up and put it in the back of the car, and I was just about to close the, the boot, and a gun was held to my head, a cocked pistol yeah. was held to my head. Uh, stop, what are you doing? And it was a, a bunch of plain clothes, like the Royal Protection Officers, and they're all kind of skulking around in the bushes, I guess, you know, <laughs> waiting for some goose-based nonsense to happen, you know, <laughs> goose malfeasance. And uh, he said, what are you doing? And, uh, and I went, oh, uh, a, a, go a goose. And, <laughs> and I suffered a bit of asthma, and I had an asthma attack, and I started wheezing. I was going, a goose, a goose. <laughs> going, what is it? A goose, it's a goose. <laughs> Um, and I'm thinking, am I going to die? <laughs> this is my last word. <laughs> what? And then and he, went, he goes, all right. And the other fellow, there was two of them, and the guy had a, had a pistol, and the goose was under the blanket, so he couldn't see what it was. <laughs> so then the goose's head appeared from under the blanket. <laughs> and the other guy pointed the gun at it, imploring it. <laughs> what, what are we going to do? <laughs> Some weird terrorist goose. You know. <laughs> And the guy goes, all right, he goes, show me, show me. Easy, easy. <laughs> so I revealed the goose, and clearly it was a goose. The goose came up like this to face the gun. <laughs> so there was a sort of weird sort of standoff. So. Right there. And then, uh, and then we just sort of stood there, like, really, like... <laughs> How did this happen? You know, that went on for ages. And eventually the first guy did that thing with the, the you know, the radio. He went, stand down, just a goose. <laughs> Who else? Who else was, you know what I mean? We were like snipers trained, like a red dot. I mean, no, it's a goose, it's a goose. Stand down, stand down. <laughs> And I, I must ask, uh, music, there's mu obviously, there's got, music yeah. is your first love. It is. Yes. And now, we found this picture, I, well, I think it's in your book, I don't know where we found this picture. Uh, see if you can spot <laughs> oh, Lord. Bill Bailey. No, no, And this please. is in your, I think your first band, yeah. the ironically named Famous Five. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Oh, nice. Which, which one's Bill? The one all the way on the left. Oh, yeah. She's good. Oh, that's good. Yes. Got it right away. That's yeah. Okay. It took me a while. I took, so, I, no, yeah. It's yeah. a little scowl. The, the little scowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pal. What sort of music did you do? Uh, I was <laughs> like 80s electro pop, you know. And we, that particular, look at us. What a bunch of moody muppets. <laughs> and, we, and that, you, you can't see it in that shot, but Dave, who's the drummer, he's second from the right. And um, he, his idea. <laughs> that, that is a great look. <laughs> what about it? <laughs> He's a hairdresser as well. That's even more about it. Wow. <laughs> he did that. And the idea was in this photo shoot, we'd all have our le little fingers painted black. Like that was our thing. You know, we'd have one black fingernail, like, yeah, because we got black, yeah, all right? So we're cool. <laughs> and then it looked like we'd all caught our hand in a door. It's <laughs> really, like, we're the clumsiest band on the planet. <laughs> so we've scratched that idea. 
that, stupid. Uh, Jessica, you weren't in a band, but you and your friends did. You did sing oh, door gosh. to door. Yes, this is so nerdy. You want me to talk about we'll it? it? Okay, yeah, it's cute. Okay, so well, unless you were like 25. But you were, <laughs> how old were you? I was like 10 years old. Oh, oh that's oh, it's not nerdy. It's cute. It's, it's cute. slightly dangerous though because um, I was the artistic director of the cul-de-sac <laughs> theater in my neighborhood, and to raise money, the other kids and I would go door to door and sing a song about cleaning their houses to Ghostbusters, to like the the tune of Ghostbusters, but we would call ourselves dun, the dun, Dirt dun, Busters. Dun, dun, like that Hoover. We'd be like, <laughs> if your maid's on strike, we don't clean, that's a psych. Who are you gonna call? Dirt Busters. And then we'd stand there and just go, na, 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 na. <laughs> Strangers' houses and clean their house. We did a terrible job, but it was probably very dangerous. It was a different time, Jessica. Different yeah. time. Uh, and now, Matt Damon, have you ever been in a musical? Yeah. Is this a musical? No. <laughs> no, but I'm playing Humpty Dumpty in that case. <laughs> but look at the dedication. <laughs> Really seriously, yeah. that was I was full on. I, I mean, I was I don't know 14 or whatever, but I knew this is what I wanted to do, and I thought it took that kind of determination. <laughs> <laughs> so was that at school? Were you at, is this when you? Cause you were at school, school with Ben Affleck. Yes, yeah. And that's when your connection started was back then. Yeah, yeah. And, but even at that age, you as you said, you both took it very seriously. Yeah, we've talked about how weird it is that I mean, <clears throat> no one in our families was in the in the industry. I mean, we lived in. Boston or Cambridge, Massachusetts, not a town that had, you know, I mean, it was, it was very odd that we both wanted to do this. And we lived just two short blocks away from each other and, and uh, had this, each had this kind of singular, kind of individual passion for this thing. And so when we met, it kind of reinforced, you know, everything for both of us. And, and that was kind of how our friendship started. Mm -hmm. And this is when you, you would have the lunches, these acting lunches. Business lunches, yeah. We yeah. called them business lunches. And, and you were like 14. Yes. I, I was 16 and he was 14. And, and, we would, and we would, there were two cafeterias. We went to a very big high school. There were 3,000 kids. And uh, there was the main cafeteria and then what they called the media cafeteria, which was a small cafeteria. And we would meet at the media cafeteria for a business lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would be like, hey man, business lunch today? Yeah, yeah, I'll see you there at 1230. <laughs> and then we get there and we get our cheeseburgers and we'd sit down and uh, we wouldn't have anything to talk about. We didn't have anything. <laughs> so what's going on? <laughs> you know, but <clears throat> it was during that time that we would go to New York together and, uh, and audition for, um, you know, we got an agent and we um, started traveling to New York and then eventually, <laughs> mercifully not right away, <laughs> but after a few years started getting some work. And yourself and Ben Affleck, the, the night of the winning Oscars and everything, because we, we, I think we just saw a picture, there you are, because how old are you there? <laughs> uh, I'm 27 and Ben's 25. Well, you look even younger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, funnily enough, we'd been in the business for a while then. I mean, we'd been, I got in the union when I was 16, so. I mean, that's 11 years after getting in the union. But that still must be such a kind of mind thing. Uh, to... Yeah, I mean, it's still, it took a really long time to, to just process everything. I mean, things happen so fast, uh, you know. Even though we'd been hanging around Hollywood for a long time, it, and, and, that, and that movie, Good Will Hunting, you know, was five years in the making. So it, 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 it happened kind of in slow motion for us. We were anxious to get it going. Things weren't moving fast enough. But once all of that happened, that happened kind of... Overnight. That that night must have sent you into a tailspin. Did you go crazy that that actual night? Did you go nuts? <laughs> Actually, I remember I remember very clearly <clears throat> going back with my girlfriend at the time, and we went to the, uh, her house, and she went to sleep, and and <laughs> I, seriously, I couldn't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I had a ponytail back then. <laughs> But I, I couldn't sleep. I, I was just kind of still buzzing and, yeah. and was sitting there. And I remember very clearly looking at that award and, um, and, and thinking very, very clearly. Am I allowed to say a four-letter word on this yeah, show? Sure. <laughs> I literally looked at it. I was alone with it. And I said to myself, thank God I didn't fuck anybody over for this. <laughs> and I, I suddenly had this kind of thing wash over me where I thought, imagine chasing that and not getting it, and getting it finally in your 80s or your 90s with all of life behind you and realizing what an unbelievable waste 
of your, you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it can't, it's got to be, you know what I mean? It's not, it, it, it can't be good it, enough. It, it, right. Mm. It yeah. can't fill you up. It will never, if that's a hole that you have, that won't fill it. Right? And, and I felt so, like, blessed to have that awareness at to 27. Learn, yeah, to learn it at that to age. To learn it. And, and because I, I wouldn't have known it unless I, I knew it. You know what and I you're mean? you're right. Like, imagine figuring out at 80. That would be... How hard, and, I, and I literally, like, my heart broke for a second. I, I, it's like I imagined another one of me, you know, an old yeah. man, kind of going like, oh, my God, where did my life go? What, did, what have I done? And then it's over, you know? <laughs> and what was the phrase? Was a phrase that you heard? Was it in a movie you heard a phrase? There goes... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said it to my mother. This is, this is funny. I said, uh, in, in the movie The Natural, Robert Redford, and it's based on something the baseball player Ted Williams once said. But so his character, Roy Hobbs, in The Natural says, all I want is to walk down the street, you know, and when I walk down the street for people to say, there goes Roy Hobbs, the best that ever was. And my mother, and I loved that movie, and I loved Robert Redford, and my mother uh, asked me one day, well, what is, it, what is it that you want, Matthew? What are you? And I said, look, all I want <laughs> is to walk down the street someday and have people say, there goes Matt Damon, the best that ever was. She goes, that is the most disgusting, <laughs> self thing I've ever heard come out of your mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> So wait, oh, we have something for you. Um, NASA is sending up the insight to Mars, and your name, this is a, a boarding pass, your name is going to go up to Mars on this mission in a chip, along with the names of some lucky people who, uh, who, who are, who've been included. But my, but so this is your boarding pass to prove that your name is going to Mars. Oh, wow. So that's, so that's from NASA. That's that's absolutely real. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Nice. No, Bill. Bill. Yeah. <laughs> we had one for Bill, but he didn't really want to go. No, yeah. oh, my God. You can have mine. I mean, all I'm thinking is air miles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I know will never NASA pay for another those. flight again. Yeah. 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 If you make me laugh, I'll send you out the front <laughs> with the rocket. <laughs> Time now. He has gone from internet sensation to global superstar. Here to perform the song of the summer, Can't Feel My Face, from the album Beauty Behind the Madness. Please welcome The Weekend! <laughs> and I know she'll be the death of me, at least we'll both be numb. And she'll always get the best of me, the worst is yet to come. But at least we're both beautiful and stay forever young. This I know, yeah, this I know. She told me to worry about it. She told me to worry no more. We both know we can't go without it. She told me you never be alone. Me, at least we'll both be. Uh, we shall always get the best of me. The worst is. 
She told me to worry. No. The weekend only communicates through the power of song. He doesn't chat, so he's not coming over. But it's a good song, right? Yeah. Uh, right, before we go, just time for the first visit of the new series to the big red chair. Who there? Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. hello. Now you see, look. Yes. This will be an amusing story lady. about a lost cat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this will be a, this will be a nice story. Uh, what's your name? My name is Bryony. Bryony, and uh, where are you from, Bryony? I'm from London. London, and uh, what do you do, Bryony? I edit a literary and art magazine. You see, uh, you see, come on. tone, tone is being yes. raised right here. <laughs> Bryony is raising the tone single-handedly. Okay, Bryony. Yeah. Uh, lovely. Off you go with this story. Well, I was brought up in a rather conservative household. No. But I was a, very, <laughs> I was a wild child. <laughs> and when I was 19, a dear friend of mine, a boy, was sent to jail, to prison. So my friend and I decided we'd cheer him up. He was in Wormwood Scrubs. And we decided to dress up as prostitutes to go and visit him. <laughs> into the tea room to visit him and it was the day that my Welsh Chapel grandparents were doing voluntary service selling tea. <laughs> <laughs> when you say you were dressed as a prostitute, what Well we were we you know everything was up and uh, we had fishnets and stilettos and you know the whole works. So my grandfather was not very happy. No I very well. Now do you want to be flipped or do you want to walk? I think I'll walk. Okay, you can walk there Brian. Go on. Go on. You can contact me via website at this very address. Thank you to all my guests tonight. The weekend. <laughs> Bill Bailey. <laughs> Jessica Chastain. <laughs> and Mr. Matt Damon. <laughs> Join me next week with Hawkbird actor Tom Hiddleston, Night of the Theatre, Sakenda Brana, Oscar winner Anne Hathaway, and the great Robert De Niro. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye -bye.